Hey guys, welcome back to Ostrich Investing, where our goal is to educate and debate specific stock investment ideas. Uh, let's jump right into today's video on Enbridge. And this is going to be a different video than most, so let me know in the comment section below if you'd like more videos like this. Uh, today, you know, I don't normally discuss my positions and I definitely don't own all of the companies profiled on, on this channel. Um, that said, I did own Enbridge and since I recently sold my shares, I thought it'd be interesting to review the results of that investment on this channel uh, for you. So this video is going to include when I purchased the shares, my investment thesis at the time, and then the reason for selling uh, recently at $55 a share. <clears throat> and then also calculate uh, my realized returns and uh, IRR on this investment. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share with a friend. Uh, let's jump into it. So here's Enbridge five-year um, trading chart. And <clears throat> I'll outline sort of where I jumped in and out of the stock. So my first purchase of Enbridge was back in July 2017. I bought uh, 100 shares at $52.09. So the 100 is, is just a made up number, uh, but then everything following that will be sort of proportionate. So I'm not using the exact number of shares that I bought, but it's in the right uh, proportions. So it'll come up to the exact same percentage returns. So I bought 100 shares at $52.09. Uh, and then in March 2018, I bought another 45 shares at $40.51. Uh, December 2018, I bought another 65 shares at $40.58. I guess I really like that uh, $40 mark. Um, three months later, in March 2019, I sold 50 shares at $48.92. <clears throat> And then recently, uh, in late February 2020, I sold the remaining 160 shares that I owned at $55.05. Uh, and then obviously throughout, uh, throughout the piece, I collected anywhere sort of a 5 to 7% dividend yield uh, on Enbridge uh, throughout the piece. So if we, if we go back, we won't go into super detail here, but our bull, bear, and base case scenarios from the July 2018 video that I did on Enbridge. It was one of the first ones on this channel, so uh, the the editing, uh, not the editing, sorry, the editing's great. It's uh, My recording is a little bit raw, um, <clears throat> but the bull, the base, and the bear case, that's pretty consistent with when, uh, when I made that second investment in Enbridge is how I was thinking through the scenarios. And you can see that um, a lot of it was was predicated, if we look at the bull case, uh, successful MLP roll-up. So that, that structure, uh, simplification, funding growth without dilution, delever the balance sheet, dividend growth of 10% plus per year, <clears throat> and essentially a revert to historical valuations. And then we put a 7% free cash flow yield on, and, and back then this was the 2019 estimate, and that was going to get you to a share price of 68. And there was also the base case, which was a little bit more conservative that got you to $53. So roughly that's how I was thinking about the investment. And then we'll, we'll jump into the actual thesis that I had each, at each step along the way. <clears throat> so in July 2017, that, that predates this channel, um, and back then I was thinking about it uh, very simplistically. Uh, I actually bought Enbridge for blue chip dividend income. I took out a small home equity line, and the 5% dividend yield more than covered the mortgage interest rate of 2.9%. So. While it's slightly embarrassing on a, uh, on a channel like this to say that that was my thesis, um, <clears throat> the truth is, if I'm being honest, uh, that was my thesis at the time, and that's why I bought the stock. And I think regardless of why you're buying a stock, know, have your thesis, know what it is, and at least, you know, honestly, if you, you go and look back on it, I did collect that 5 6 7% dividend and um, sold it for a little bit higher. So it, it did work out, but it, uh, like I said, it's a little bit embarrassing that that was my thesis at the time. 
Um, <clears throat> fast forward to March 2018, I'd done a, a fair bit more work on the company. And I bought another 45 shares at, at $40 and change. And so here, my thesis uh, was management <clears throat> is in the penalty box. So the company overpaid for Spectra. Free cash flow per share was actually down in 2017. Leverage and debt was high. They had the complicated structure. They'd missed guidance. And you put all that together, that had really depressed the share price. But I think the key for me was a lot of these issues could be fixed. And that was really the thesis. And, and over, underlying all of that, Enbridge operates regulated business model with high barriers to entry. I mean, it's hard for anybody to get a pipeline built. And they've got stable cash flows uh, and high value assets that are tough to replicate. So with all of that and a 5% dividend while you wait, my thesis was really that in time management was going to be done serving their penalty and uh, the company would return to growth uh, after that dip in 2017, could, could slowly reduce leverage and over time it would revert to historical valuation levels. <clears throat> December 2018 uh, was similar, uh, similar thesis, but actually a little bit stronger conviction, conviction sorry, because they'd already made some progress uh, against those key areas, uh, specifically deleveraging and the structure simplification. So in, in December 2018, the stock price had come off a little bit and I had an opportunity to buy in again at what I thought was a really attractive price. And if anything, my thesis had been de-risked at the time. So then we go to March 2019, I sold 50 <clears throat> at 48.92. And really this one's super simple. Um, I bought a bit more in December and less than three months later, I was up over 20%. And so I took a small amount off the table. And then lastly, when we get to February 2020, uh, I sold all of my shares or the remaining shares that I had at $55.06. Um, now, target price that I had when I went in uh, was to sell at a value between $55 and $60. And that was sort of that combination of my base and bull, bull case scenarios. Um, and when it hit that $55 target, I collected one final dividend, um, but, but then made the decision not to, not to be greedy. Um, and this, this trade had sort of worked out how I had hoped and to take my profits. So what does that uh, work out to from a return perspective? So my investment in Enbridge spanned two and a half years, and it worked out to be about a 30% profit, including dividends. I typically think of things in terms of an IRR um, because obviously if you've got an investment uh, that takes one year versus five years uh, to make the same amount of profit, that one year investment is going to be a lot more attractive. So IRR really puts that into an annualized figure. Uh, and this worked out to be about a 16% IRR, including the dividend yield along the way, which of course you definitely want to factor in. Uh, if you're only looking at price, I did it about 10%. So 30% overall profit and a 16% IRR. Um, market performance over the same period here, you know, I wanted to put it up here just as a bit of a benchmark. I don't, um, I don't beat myself up too much if each individual investment beats or, or uh, slightly misses the benchmark over the exact same time period. But I do think it's a good measuring stick just to see how you're doing on your individual stock selection. Uh, a lot of work and research goes into it, and if you find yourself constantly underperforming the ben benchmark, that might um, be a sign that you want to re refine your your uh, research criteria, investment criteria. So here, over the over the same period of time, and I've really just started in that July 2017 to current, the S and P 500 is up 27% uh, plus dividends, so it's about the same about 30 percent uh maybe you know, sorry s p would have done a little bit better because about call it two percent dividend yield um over two and a half years so add five percent to that it gets about a 32 percent return and then the tsx was up 11 percent plus dividends so my enbridge did a little bit better than the tsx and almost but not quite as good as the s p 500. So using the baseball analogy, uh, I definitely wouldn't call this a home run, but um, I viewed it, Enbridge as a solid, solid single, good investment. So what's the conclusion 
I think 16% realized IRR over a few years for a large cap utility infrastructure business like Enbridge is not bad. Um, tough to time investments perfectly, and my initial investment was a bit early. Uh, of course, it would have been a lot better to have just bought shares at $40 and sold at $55. I'd be here presenting a video to you with a 50 plus percent return, uh, including dividends. Um, but again here, I think that one of the key takeaways here, the goal is profit, not, not perfection. And if I was going to share something like this with you, I wasn't going to just cherry pick uh, the shares that I bought at the bottom and that I, I sold at the top. And having an investment thesis uh, provided the conviction to hold through the choppy periods for Enbridge. Uh, the dividend helped too, of course, uh, makes it a little bit easier. But it also allows you to properly review your investment um, like I'm doing hopefully on, on this video, so you're not just focused on the results. Sometimes you might buy a stock and it goes up, but not for the reasons you thought. And so you did well, but you kind of got lucky. Um, and in other times, you might nail the thesis, everything goes as planned, but the stock market just uh, disagrees uh, with your view on a higher price. And so I think it's important to be able to kind of circle back and look at your investments and review them, not just based on the results, but in terms of how they performed versus your thesis. And lastly, while line three in service might have taken the stock to 60, and that's in my honest opinion, um, <clears throat> my initial sell price for this investment was $55. And I did get uh, a little bit greedy and just wanted to clip that one last dividend, which I did, um, but I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna get too greedy. Uh, and in this case, uh, I was lucky to sell before the coronavirus panic selling the following week. And, and obviously that was just pure luck on, on my part. So that's it for today's video, a very different one. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Um, is there still more room to run in Enbridge? And do you like these types of videos? And if you do, I'll try and put a few more like this together. Uh, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Be back soon with more content. But until then, happy investing and don't bury your head in the sand.